Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to yet another edition of Late Night Reviews with Jean. <laughs> because yes, I am filming this in the middle of the night once again. So if it sounds like I'm trying to be quiet, that's because I am. <laughs> but I just watched episode one of What If? Let's talk about it. So the first episode of What If has finally landed on Disney Plus and we have gotten a chance to see the first ever MCU animated series. Now this is by no means the first ever Marvel animated series. I mean there are plenty of Marvel animated series that have been produced over the years but this is the first time that the MCU has actually delved into making an animated series that seems to be canonical we'll talk about that in a moment but it's very interesting to see how this animated series could potentially be linked to what's happening in the mcu in live action now this review is unfortunately coming to you guys a little bit late because i did take a bit of a break but i am back now trying to produce videos whenever i can and so i am expecting to be able to uh, drop my reviews of what if on a weekly basis on thursdays as i did with Loki key this midweek drop is just so frustrating to me once again if i could just take a moment to complain as your ordinary lay person who isn't a full-time youtuber disney what were you thinking like really was it really worth it to drop all of your disney plus shows on wednesdays just to make room for the occasional mcu film on a friday like i don't feel like it was worth all of that <laughs> like it's just so painful to me wednesdays suck it's a awful strategy but anyways I will likely be dropping my reviews of the series every week on Thursday because I I, I can't <laughs> and finally of course before we delve into my thoughts on episode one of the series as per usual if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next now without further ado let's get into my thoughts on episode one of what if so first of all, I find the premise of this series incredibly interesting. I was already pretty excited for the series when I saw the trailer for it and that dropped last year during the Disney Investor Day situation. I felt like that trailer was really exciting. It generated a lot of buzz and curiosity. I also felt like Jeffrey Wright was perfectly perfectly cast for his vocal uh, role as the watcher i feel like his voice very much resonated when he was saying those lines in the trailer and that very much translates to this episode by the way but we'll talk about that later on but anyways i was really interested in seeing what they would do with this premise with each episode exploring this kind of else world i believe that's how it's referred to in dc but basically these alternative like timelines and storylines um, that allow you to delve into different types of stories without kind of breaking the continuity of the main canon and for the first episode we answer the question of what if Peggy Carter ended up being Captain America what if she had been the one to receive the serum instead of Steve Rogers and I feel like that's a very interesting question and I like the fact that we get to see Peggy in this heroic role as Captain America or in this case as Captain Carter who's kind of this world's version of I guess Captain Britain from the comics. In this episode we see one key decision that Peggy Carter makes change the entire course of her life and her story. Instead of going in the back during the whole process when Steve is about to be injected with the serum she instead stays like in the front like where all the scientists are and she's able to spot the Hydra agent who has a bomb but as a result Steve ends up getting shot and is no longer able to take the serum and she steps in as a volunteer to do so and so we see her go through the transformation process of becoming Captain America except this time around of course she also has to deal with the sexism and you know the implications of being a female Captain America during this period like I said going into this series I was really interested to see what they would do with an animated 
animated MCU series. But I have to say, overall, I think I speak for many of us <laughs> when I say that we weren't the most excited for What If. But it was only until it became clear that multiverses were going to be featured in a big way in phase four of the MCU and that perhaps this series would even be canonical. That's when my ears started perking up. <laughs> That's when I was like, hang on a minute, like this is very, very interesting because now we have stories that may actually have some consequences in like the live action corner of the MCU. So I feel like seeing this version of Captain America, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to presume anything. I don't want to guess anything, but I would just say I wouldn't be wholly surprised if we saw perhaps a live action version of this iteration of Captain America in a future MCU film because I don't think they would introduce this concept for no reason. But going back to this episode, I will say one thing that I very much enjoyed was first of all, the animation style. It's very different, it's very distinct, especially from the other Marvel series. As I mentioned, they have a ton and I've watched quite a few of them. Avengers Assemble, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Ultimate Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man. Like I grew up on these animated shows. So I've seen quite a few. Okay, I know my a Marvel animated series, okay? And, and the animation style here is quite different. Um, it took me a minute to kind of get into it, not gonna lie, especially when I first saw the trailer. I wasn't, you know, overly infused about this animation design, but I do sort of feel like once I got into this story that it kind of grew on me. And I was also really impressed by how they took advantage of the medium of animation in order to depict some badass action sequences. <laughs> <laughs> like they had Peggy Carter doing things that an ordinary actress simply would not be able to do. Like, I'm sorry, but human beings have limits. Whereas designs, <laughs> whereas CG characters don't. And I feel like they took advantage of that. She has some crazy action sequences. And I think it's great. I think that is the benefit of having an animated show is that you can stretch things beyond what humans can do physically <laughs> and what can be done, you know, on a set and I think that's definitely something that we see in this first episode with Captain Carter. And speaking of depicting this new hero herself, I would say that I very much enjoyed the way that uh, Captain Carter was designed in this episode. I like her suits. Of course, it's very reminiscent of Steve's suits from the first Avenger, but she has like the incorporation of the Union Jack, which is like very Captain Britain. But I was also quite impressed by the fact that the series didn't shy away from the the muscularness <laughs> the muscliness of the character after she took the serum after she took it she was very much like henched up and she gained muscle mass just as Steve did in the first Avenger when he took the serum and I feel like that was a very interesting move because it does have a different meaning when you're dealing with a female character because female characters tend to be depicted as badass but feminine and in the case case of Peggy Carter they didn't shy away from her actually having that added muscle mass um, to show that the serum impacted her physically in the way that it did Steve Rogers and as a result of that of course you have that dynamic between Steve and Peggy that's still very much romantic um, and they still have that love story play out but it kind of changes that dynamic a little bit when you have the smaller Steve who's like pre-serum Steve and Peggy Carter who's post-serum she's Captain Carter and she stands you know several heads above him and she's quite dense <laughs> and so I feel like it's interesting to see that they kind of committed to that basically and on the flip side of this I will say that it was very refreshing to see that Steve didn't make a big deal out of it either he was still in love with Peggy he still admired and respected her and another topic that is explored throughout this episode as to be expected is the idea of what it means to be a female Captain America or in this case Captain Britain we already saw saw the MCU delving into what it means to be a black Captain America in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But this time around, we have Peggy taking on the mantle as a woman in the 1940s. She is constantly shut down.
down, constantly ignored and belittled and dismissed and told by her superiors that she is just lucky to be in the room, that she should be grateful that she's being included in these conversations that only men should be having. And it's just constant. <laughs> and so again, just like with Sam Wilson taking on this shield, Peggy Carter taking on this shield does have a different meaning to it. It does have a different layer of meaning that we didn't really see with the character of Steve Rogers. Now, if I was going to delve into some of the issues that I had with this episode, the first one up would be the fact that the episode kind of conflates the struggle that Peggy has as a woman in the 1940s trying to be respected during a war, okay, during a war, and she's this qualified agent who deserves respect and deserves to be listened to. It kind of conflates that struggle with that of Steve, who is less respected because of his stature, because of his like physical appearance. And whilst I understand the point that they made in that little scene uh, where Steve was like, you know, I know what it feels like to be disrespected because he didn't receive the serum, he didn't undergo that physical transformation. And so people were still looking down on him. I understand that they were kind of bonding over being dismissed and disrespected, but I just wanted to say it's not the same thing. <laughs> Like, it's not the same thing. Listen, I love Steve Rogers, okay? I love me a good Steve Rogers. Yes, I do. And, and you know, cute little pre-serum Steve. Like, he has my heart, absolutely. But it's not the same thing. The misogyny that Peggy is experiencing in this 1940s horrible world is not the same thing as Steve being rejected from the army because of his literal uh, physical ailments, because of his literal illnesses. Like, that's just not... <laughs> It's not the same, like she has been rejected because of her gender, because of these arbitrary gender roles in society. Whereas Steve was rejected because of his literal physiology and the illnesses that he had that would have physically prevented him from being able to carry out the very intense activities um, that he needed to in order to join the army. So I feel like it's just two different things that are kind of equated with one another. And I think that's a little bit unfortunate. But having said that, my biggest critique for this episode by far, by far would have to be that it is way, way too short. <laughs> way too short listen I'm kind of spoiled okay I'm kind of spoiled because you know earlier this year I don't know if you remember but earlier this year we got one of the best animated shows of all time in Invincible okay and the Invincible episodes were like 40 to 48 ish minutes long like they were as long as some of the MCU live action episodes they were longer than some of the <laughs> MCU live action episodes please those live action episodes were taking the piss but anyway in the case of what if it seems as though they're going for like the half an hour mark which is unfortunate to me because it could use a little bit more time this episode was essentially trying to condense the entirety of captain america the first avenger which has like an almost two hour runtime into like half an hour <laughs> and whilst at the same time you know coming at it from a different angle of it being peggy who's captain america now and to me that's just not enough time like it, it just felt so rushed we were just jumping from one scene to another to another and also because of that kind of rushed feeling it felt like we never really got a chance to marinate in this particular episode with this unique story it felt like instead they were just trying to hit you know the greatest hits of Captain America the first Avenger and on the topic of trying to hit all of the greatest hits of Captain America the first Avenger I will say the majority of this episode very much felt like that it didn't really give me enough new material to sink my greedy little teeth into <laughs> like I want to I want to everything to be different i want to <laughs> every single possibility to be explored but instead we just have like this very minute change and yes there are bigger implications for that you know fine but i wanted everything to be different i feel like there were missed opportunities here for example number one missed opportunity steve rogers should have become the winter soldier he absolutely should have become the winter soldier so we do have this replay of the events that took place on azano on this mountain where in the the original Captain America the First Avenger, Bucky ends up falling
falling and then he ends up being discovered by Hydra, turns into the Winter Soldier. Like, I'm sure you know the story at this point. But in this time around, Steve Rogers, who's in this um, kind of first iteration of the Iron Man suit designed by Howard Stark, ends up falling off the train instead. And he doesn't end up dying, even though Peggy kind of mourns him initially. But because the suit is so well built, it's like indestructible. And Howard Stark clearly knew what he was doing almost like a century before his son invented that very same suit. Um, because he was able to survive the fall, he carries on being this version of the first Iron Man, <laughs> like Captain America the first Iron Man. And that's all well and good. I think that's fun and cute and also a fun way of incorporating Howard Stark in this story a little bit more. However, I think it would have been a great opportunity <laughs> to have Steve become the Winter Soldier and maybe Hydra gives him some version of the serum. But then ultimately we could have had Peggy fighting against Steve. Like I think that would have been phenomenal. <laughs> and another side effect of this episode essentially being a much more condensed version of Captain America the first Avenger is that a lot of the side characters that we came to know and love in Captain America the first Avenger are very much sidelined like that they're, they're barely existent <laughs> in this episode okay I don't think a single one of the howling commandos gets a line I don't think so like if they do it's, it's like very few but we mostly see Howard Stark be more prominent although I was very confused if they were using the lines from the original film for Howard Stark because it sounded like the same thing. I recently re-watched uh, Captain America the First Avenger so I felt like those lines were exactly the same but maybe they got Dominic Cooper in to do some more work. We'll talk about the voice cast in a second um, but yeah it's unfortunate to see that the majority of the Howling Commandos are just mute here. Bucky Barnes is essentially reduced to a bunch of quippy lines that don't quite land for me personally which is a shame. You have Sebastian Stan voicing this character and you're just gonna waste it on like quippy like no <laughs> no I don't approve okay I feel like he could have been done better and since we're already on the topic of the voice cast I was really happy to see so many of the original actors who portrayed these characters in the live action film come back to voice these characters in this animated series that's really exciting to me we will be seeing some of these actors return for subsequent episodes which is really fun um and I do feel like for the actors who didn't come back for example Hugo weaving was replaced by that actor who portrayed uh, the red skull in avengers infinity war and he was known for being like a great impersonator of hugo weaving um so i think he did a great job like he was pretty seamless in his vocal performance here um i also very much enjoyed whoever voiced the character of steve rogers because of course chris evans did not return to voice the character i think he did a solid job it wasn't distracting it felt like his voice was close enough to steve that it worked but i was so so happy to hear Hayley Atwell return as uh, Peggy Carter after she got the short end of the stick when it came to her live action series uh, Agent Carter which was on ABC and was cancelled after two seasons. I really liked Agent Carter the series you know this is all your fault <laughs> this is all your fault you guys are the reasons why I can't have nice things okay I was really upset when that series was cancelled. Hmm. I think it was like ahead of its time honestly because now we're delving into all of these characters in the periphery of the MCU and now we're all like oh my god this is great this is amazing what happened to Loki but Agent Carter was doing this like years ago <laughs> and doing it well as well so it really is a shame that the series was cancelled after season two season two wasn't my favorite and I still haven't finished it but I do feel like it it deserved a fair shake it deserved at least three seasons to see where the story was going because I do feel like Hayley Atwell was a great charismatic lead in that show show and I think she does a great job here as well and I'm, I'm telling you it's not out of the question that she might come back <laughs> she's still there. listen if they're already introducing the idea why not and next up I remember saying in my review of the uh, Disney Investor Day trailers that Jeffrey Wright was doing something insane with his vocal performance as the watcher and let me tell you after watching this episode like I just reaffirm this <laughs> like can I just confirm this okay because he is just perfect 
perfect casting perfect he has the gravity okay he has the like weight like it feels like god is speaking <laughs> it feels like this godlike being is talking to you and he's just like i am the watcher but i will not intervene and i'm just like oh my god you are gonna intervene though <laughs> But so far, I really enjoy this character, this spectator of these events. And I can't wait to see how these episodes kind of converge together. Like, I can't wait to see how the story ends up bringing all of these different splinter stories together to give us a through line that probably involves the Watcher. Like I said, he's going to intervene. He won't be able to help himself. <laughs> but that's it from me, guys. Now that I told you guys my thoughts on What If Episode 1, it's time for you guys to let let me know what you thought of the series down in the comments below please be sure to subscribe to catch you videos coming up like i said i will be dropping my reviews of what if every week probably on thursday if all goes to plan <laughs> so you can go ahead and subscribe and turn on your notifications to make sure that you catch those releases but thank you guys so so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i will see you in the next one bye